All right, everybody, just picked up another bike. Uh, this is a 1999 YZ400F, and it's very clapped out. Uh, both wheel bearings are totally shot. Back tire is bald. Uh, dirty air filter. It is locked up, or as I should say, it, it is locked up. Uh, I have a box of parts. Look at that one. You see that? Might be okay. It's bad. But I have a box of parts. But we gotta figure out why it's locked up. Uh, it should have everything with it that I've seen through the box. But we'll see when we get there, I guess. First thing we're gonna do is take the carb off. Maybe. If I find the right screwdriver. Gonna bust the clamp loose on the cylinder. Alright, after that we're gonna loosen the uh, two subframe uh, bolts at the bottom. We're not gonna take them out, just loosen them. Should be one on both sides. Yep. And then we will take this bolt all the way out. And then the subframe should slide or tilt back. And it should take the carb with it. threads there we go yep and then that should come back Jeez. and this was already loose so the carb didn't come off but there's the carb <laughs> look how dirty this is i know <laughs> it's dirty gotta unplug this if i can figure out how to unplug it there we go now we can get this out of the way. Camera overheated, but we're back now. Uh, we left off, got the carb off. Now we're going to take the oil lines off. He already had one uh, bolt out, but he didn't take the rest of them off. Or whoever took it apart. Normally they have a top and a bottom washer on those. There's that one. There's not one on that one. Huh. Okay. You take all those. Put washers on the list. Alright, so now we gotta get these two out. And then we can take the head off and then we'll really start to be able to see how bad it is. All right, I just had the camera cut out on me again. I believe it was a bad battery, but we're back. I hadn't done anything other than we're about to take this head off. And then we'll really be able to tell how bad it is or was. Uh-oh. Why is that stuck in there? See that? It's not moving at all. Uh-oh. <laughs> I was able to move the whole thing. I wonder if it was just in a bond or something. Probably not. Mm. Maybe it's loose enough. Let me just loosen this one and see. Oh, I never said this, but this is my first ever four stroke that I'm going to be working on. I've done two strokes in the past, even before recording them, but I've never done a four stroke. And 
think we're gonna about to get rained on, so. We might have to move to the garage. That or postpone. Well, that's not good. That the other one didn't move. Jeez, man, how freaking far down are you? It is not moving. What the hell does that mean? Nothing good, I promise you that. Just let me... Might have to just destroy the threads in the bottom, or the, uh, the cylinder, because that, that's where it's threaded into. Uh-oh. Have, have to re -tap it or something. Uh-oh. But being locked up, they might be getting a new cylinder anyway. If it's if it's not scored up, then we will have to retap that because I think it's cross threaded. Because <laughs> it finally broke. So I noticed something else while she was getting me a new battery. The front wheel bearing still might be bad, but the front wheel is not aligned with the axle. or the bearings aren't in place with the axle. So that's why it's flopping around so much, but we'll have to line everything back up or just go ahead and replace them. Being a 99, still might just go ahead and replace it. Cause I'm sure it's time. And I didn't start this video by cleaning it because it was already taken apart on the top end. And there was no point to tear it back apart. I mean, put it back together to tear it back apart. We'll know for sure how bad the threads were in a second once this bolt comes out. All right, let's see the threads. They are not bad. So I don't know why it wouldn't come out. Now it should be able to come off. There we go. Heads off, almost. Oh, that don't look good. Oh, God. Don't, don't say nothing yet, because I just kind of saw it too. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> That's what I thought. So uh, I'll tell you what happened. Just let me get this off. Why is it cut up and metal everywhere? Dropped a valve. Oh. Oh, man. You should definitely show that. Yeah, so see if you can see it on the camera. Looks like it dropped a valve, and I know it did because... There's not one in the head. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That hurts. Well. That's not good at all. There's the cam chain. We need to find something to hold that up with, or I'll just do that. Mmm. Will it move at all? No, it will not. So, ugh, that's awful. <laughs> All right, give me a second. Mm. That's what I was telling them. Normally, they don't just see mm. for no reason. Let's see if I can just get this uh, cylinder to come off. I don't think I can, but I'm going to try. Mm. Yes, sir. Sure did. It's bad. So, hold on. I gotta look at this again. Mm. I hope this isn't expensive. It's probably gonna be. So you gotta get all the other stuff to go with it. Ugh. I might just have to part it out. Or if I can find a head on eBay that's not damaged. This might just have to be a part out bite. It might be. We're going to see though.
our chance of revival might already be gone. Time of death. <laughs> come on, come out of there. This might be way worse off than we thought. If I didn't say it already, I got it for 540 bucks. Mm. Let me see if I can't clean a little bit of this out. WD-40 in a rag. Someone really didn't take care of it. Told you it was ran hard. It moved. Not good, but it moved. Oh man. Oh man. What? I think the cylinder's okay. You fucking lying. I'm not. Oh. Cylinder's fine. Look at that. Let me wipe it out. Look at that. There's still cross hatching in it. It looks good. There is no big gouges. There is a spot. It's not gouged, but there is a spot where you can see where the piston's been sitting for so long. Wow. So we got lucky there. So what is this? That is your piston. So only the piston needed to be fixed, or... Well. Wow, that looks really pretty. Glad you think so. Because we might have... Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. All right. Mm. Okay. So, oh man, definitely gonna change the oil. There's still oil in there, but there's no up and down play in the crank. Crank's good, which means bottom end bearings should be good. So it looks like the damage that was done was on the head and the piston. Let's see, I might get you to grab me something. No dowel pins in that. There's no dowel pins in that. So there's dowel pins missing. You might have to buy some of those. They're not expensive. How do you clean all this up? We'll hit it with the engine stuff after everything's back together. So, that's a sir clip on that side. And, uh, is it a sir clip on this side? Can yes. you grab my phone? Yeah, you can go grab it. Let's get this piston off of there. Hopefully. Maybe. Well, maybe not. How do you get the surf clips out? Hmm. Seeing as seeing as I've never worked on a four stroke, I do not know. <laughs> oh yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Look at that! I'm just glad the top of the piston is just mangled. I'm so glad the cylinder's not scored, but... Alright, we'll continue this video once I figure out how to get these rings out. Or the... yeah. 
in the video. Yeah. All right, I finally got the piston out. Uh, my dad said to get a pick under it and try to basically pull it out, but I couldn't do it, so he came and tried to do it. He couldn't either, but I got it out. What we did is we had to eventually just dremel and eventually cut the ring, and we were able to just pull it right out after that. So, parts are on the way, and we'll be ready to put it back together. I'm still waiting on parts, but I did get a used new tire. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and I don't have the means to replace it myself. So I'm gonna go get it changed. <clears throat> All right, we got it off. So now I'll, uh, I'll go get it, put it back on. I'll get it put on and see you back later. All right, we just got back. Here's the wheel with the new tire on it. Uh, the tire that I brought them, uh, when they were putting it on, they, they ripped it, I guess. So they threw in, you know, another used tire. It's a Dunlop. So, yeah. Uh, as soon as parts come in, we'll replace wheel bearings, put those on, rebuild the engine. Hopefully, we'll be getting close to being done. All right. We're back out here working on the YZ. All the parts finally came in, so now we're going to put it back together. How does this go on? <laughs> I pulled the other one off without looking. Oh, like this. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm only slightly nervous because it's a four stroke engine. Just more that can go wrong. And I've never done one. Up here. There you go. Get you centered on. There you go. You're on. Cool, cool. All right. So that would mean next would be the piston. All right. I got all the rings in the right spot now. I don't think I had them up there before. Or let me phrase that. I didn't have them in the right spot before. Now I do. So now this carefully put this on there and try not to move the rings too much we still got that clip I gave you now we'll slide this down if I can get it to stay up come on bells Get up in there. There you go. I've already got one circ clip on the other side in. So now we'll get ready to put this one in on this side. I think I got it. Get that side in. Yep. Heard that click. Make sure it's in everywhere. Yep, it's in. Now I'm going to lube the cylinder. A little bit of oil. All right, slide that down a little bit. And then I need to compress the rings, which is hard. Can we push the piston down? I mean, the cylinder down for me. Ow, that hurt. Push it down. Is it not going in? Okay, let go. Pull it up. All right, try again. Continue a little bit. Right there. Go down. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Jeez, man. If y'all have any better ways to do this on four strokes, because two strokes I, are, are no problem, please let me know. We finally got it on after 
tremendous amounts of struggling. So now I'm gonna put this in and then I'm gonna throw the head on. All right, we're back. Uh, last time we got the new piston in and it got dark on us so we brought it in. Uh, I put this bolt in to hold the cylinder down and now everything moves as it should. It's smooth in there. So now we're going to continue. We're going to go ahead and put the head on. I was just making sure. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to put this on yet. Dang it. I'm trying to get it all the way on. It's not even hitting yet. But it's already getting tight. So that worries me. Alright, I'm going to take everything back apart and inspect it down there. I don't exactly know why it's doing this. So I'll come back when I figure it out. Alright, not sure if I found the problem. So, this one is the good bolt and this one is the bad one. It's got a little bit of damage right here on the start threads, so I'm going to get a die and see if I can't fix it. And then we'll see what happens after that. Alright, so I figured out the issue of why they're not going in. And it's because they're different lengths. Two long ones and two short ones. But we got them figured out now. Two strokes don't have head bolts. They just have nuts going on those studs that are stuck in there. So, learning experience, I guess. But now I don't have... The nuts that go around the head to hold it onto the cylinder. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go back out later and get those. So I guess for now I'm just gonna do some other stuff, air filter and stuff like that. And then if I have time later, I'll go out and get some. <clears throat> All right, I found some nuts. Uh, so now I'm going to time the engine so I can put the cams in. I'm running light, I can't see. Alright, I got it timed. It's really hard to see in there. But there's three marks. The first two in are connected and make like an H. And the other one is by itself. Apparently the first two are for ignition timing. And the third one is for cam adjustment for top dead center. So I've been I've been looking at the cams and think they're both aftermarket cams. I think. So I was looking at I was looking for the timing marks on them. And it looks like they're on there, but they're really weird the way they look. But I did kind of look at a diagram of how everything's supposed to look. And that's how it is. So I'm going to put it in kind of how I figure it goes in. And then we'll check it from there. But I need to get some oil to loop these up a little bit so that everything goes in properly. Why aren't these going in? Because what'd you do to them? What? Why'd you make them upset for? So I'm going to go with the exhaust first, just because. I don't think there's a specific way to put these in. Again, this is the first time I'm building a four-stroke. So, you know. So let's see, that's where that needs to be sitting. Right there. I need you to not move though. I 
this wire is really in my way. And this one should be over here. Wow, this is tight. way tighter than I thought it would be. Huh. There we go. But I gotta pick up the... Maybe I should put the intake in first. Let me try that. Put the exhaust in last. Should be sitting right there. Does this cam chain not line up with this? All right, I finally got it in. That was one of the biggest pains. Everything lines up, dot here, dot here, and then since it's an aftermarket cam, you got a dot here and a dot here instead of on the side still. So, now I'm gonna install the cam caps and the retention clips and hope I don't drop them in the engine. I can't even open them. I need to do some free. <laughs> All right, I got the cam caps on and they're torqued down. I had to go buy some new bolts for it. So now I'm going to make sure that the um what's it called? The valves are in spec. Let me find the right shim. So the intake valves are 0.13 millimeters, or they're 0.10 to 0.15 millimeters. If I can get this 13 in there, I think I'll be all right. Let me see. I don't know what I'm supposed to be trying to feel. Okay, I can get that one in. Maybe you really need help. Go to the other side. Let's see if we can get this one in. Uh oh. This valve might be tight. That one goes in. Let me check this one one more time. Okay, so that one's tight. That means it would be, what's that, less? I think is how that would work. Yeah, it would be less than that. So this is a 0.10, which is lower in spec. I can't even get my freaking thing in there. Can't tell. Give me some light. Let's see. Make sure I'm actually going where I need to. That valve might be tight, babe. Okay. So I must say that one's tight, and then the exhaust is 0.20 to 0.25. So, let's find a 23, and we will check the exhaust side, which I think I can check either way. That one's good, and that one's good for the 23. Where's the 25 at? Okay, that barely goes in on both of those. Maybe. Uh oh, that one may be loose. I hate valves. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> this is a 28. 
fits, unfortunately. Heck, that one does too. How am I supposed to check these? With that. Yeah, but that means they are too loose. Oh, well, then tighten them. You have to buy more stuff for it. To tighten them? Uh-huh. What the fuck? Ow. I got 30 fits in those. What is it supposed to be at? 20 to 25. Okay, well then it needs to be tightened. Which means you gotta buy more stuff for it. Well, is it supposed to fit or something? It's not supposed to fit. Well, why are they fitting? Because they're too loose. Who loosened them? They just wear out. All right, so I believe last time we left off, I started checking the clearances for the valves, and I realized they were out of spec, so I went ahead and ordered some shims, and I tested all of them. They're way out of spec, all of them, except for second intake. Uh, the tolerance for the exhaust is 0.20 to 0.25, so they're way off. Intakes are 0.10 to 0.15, so these two are way off. This one's all right. Oh man! So I'm gonna reshim these, and then I'll put it back in the bike, check them, and we'll go from there. So now we're gonna measure these and see exactly how thick they are. 174, just kind of spin it around, make sure it keeps going on the same thing. See, that's different. It's probably not the most accurate thing, but okay. So we'll call this a 174. We'll go around checking all of these and then I'll come back to you. All right, so with that, I don't know how good you can see this. This is a valve clearance chart. You say, you know, the uh, shim sizes up top, what it measured as is down here, and then it you find where you meet up in the middle, and it'll tell you basically what shim you need. So, for exhaust one, it measured at a .50, and it has a 174. So we'll call it a 175. Uh, there. So it says we need a 200, which would be a two millimeter shim to get it back into the standard tolerance range. So let's see if we can find a two millimeter shim. Or let me find one. Well, let me see if I can. Now we're at 190 at point 40. So if we go to point 40, and then we go all the way to 190, it says we need a 205, which is in here somewhere. I have to find it. There it is. There's the 205. 178 at point 28 for the intake. What did I say, 0.28? Mm -hmm. 178. Would I go up or down on that, you think? Because the measurement is 175 or 180. It's closer to 180, so I'm going to go with 180. So, 180 at 0.28 means it wants a 195. So this is a... 0.07 out of 190. 190. We need to go down to a 185. There's a 18. There's a 185. 175 at point 30. Go up to a 190. But I don't think I have a 190. No, yeah, I do, because I just used the 195. Here. 
All right, so now we have all the shims where they need to be. I'll just go ahead and toss them in the buckets so I don't lose them. And then I'm gonna go out there, put them on the bike, and then I'll re-shim them or re uh, remeasure them. All right, finally got some parts in. Uh, radiator hoses, a O-line banjo bolt, and a front axle nut. So right now what we're gonna do, I haven't started it yet, we're gonna go ahead and drain the oil. Uh, there's a drain plug here in the frame, one on the bottom of the engine, and then there's a filter in line with the frame, and there's an uh, engine oil filter on the other side. So, <clears throat> I'm hoping I can just clean the two filters, but I don't like, I don't trust the oil that's in this because of how abused it was, so I'm just going to go ahead and change it. I don't know what happened last time y'all were here because I've been working on it off camera. It's been a pain. I replaced the uh, air filter with a new one. Uh, we got an exhaust for it. The one that we had was not correct for this bike. It was for a 250. It's got coolant. It's got oil. So now I need to try to start it and if it starts I need to make sure oil is actually circulating oh I'm so off balance all right you ready yep give it a couple primer kicks It's just getting trapped up under there. <gasps> what? The There's fire coming out of that. Oh. It's smoking. It's fire just came out of the back of that. That's good. That's scary. Ain't none of the other ones had fire come out the back of that. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. I don't know, it's getting gas. Maybe it's just a, it's harder to kick at this stuff because it's so big. I mean, yeah, it is, but... I can't get a good kick on it because I'm not tall enough. Carburetor needs to be cleaned. Could that be the reason why it's not start? Yeah. That's what it is. Because it's overflowing out the bottom. I cleaned the carburetor out. Uh, one of the pilot jets were clogged, and the main jet was in the bottom of the bowl. It wasn't even screwed in. So, we also looked up, because there's two what looks like chokes over here. One's a choke, one's a hot start. I pulled the uh, hot start out, so. It's like, this choke don't even stay out, that sucks. We'll try to do it with no choke, but if I can't get it to do anything, I'll turn the choke on. But, theoretically, it should start now. <gasps> Shit! What was that? That was the fire coming out. Alright, 
Alright, so it's backfiring then. This isn't it good. Means it's got either too much gas or too much air. All right, I don't exactly know what I did, but I had, I had it started yesterday. I let it run for like 30 seconds. I didn't let it fully warm up, but I'm gonna see if I can get it started again tonight. I didn't record the first time because I didn't expect it to start. But we'll see. The choke doesn't stay out, so this is kind of difficult. Is it pouring gas? I gotta, wait to I gotta find a way to stop that real quick. I can't have it pouring gas. Where's it leaking gas from now? No matter what, it's just gonna pour gas. Never mind. Alright, so I got the YZ running. It still runs a little rough, but I'm gonna try to start it now just to show you that it is truly running. I've already checked uh, oil flow. It moves and so does the coolant. So uh, we'll see. So now I'm going to do uh, wheel bearings, gripped, clutch cable, stuff like that. What did we do last? Oh, uh, we got it started. I told you I was going to put wheel bearings in, put them in the back, put them in the front. The front tire actually needed to be replaced, so it got replaced. This is the rear axle. The threads on it were messed up and the nut, so I had to get a tap and die kit big enough to do this one, and the front was also messed up. But now they're both good, so I'm going to grease these axles up. I went and got some of this today, along with some fork oil. So, I'm going to use this and grease these bad mamma jammas up. All right, with those greased up, go ahead and put this back one on. I actually already had it on, then I remembered I needed to grease it up, so. Come on, ah, oh, no, no! That's why you gotta stay organized. And that right can do. Just how this garage looks organized. Make sure that's all the way through. And we'll push it forward. And we'll tighten this bad boy down. Tighten down. 
Cool. All right, let's move to the front. All right, so now we're gonna get these forks off so I can replace the fork seals. Uh, we're gonna loosen this top cap and then we're gonna break our triple clamps loose, these down here and this one. Uh, if you have fork guards on it, you wanna take those off and probably your front brake disconnect it from the fork also. All right, now that everything is loosened up, you should be able to grab your fork tube. It should just slide right out. I have to wiggle it a little bit, but it does come out. Alright, let's move to the back of my truck. Alright, now that we just finished the fork seals, now I'm going to try to work on the front brake. The brake pads are just kind of hanging there, so I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with it, but we're going to figure it out. The last time you saw this bike, we had the forks off, getting it done, and I was talking about fixing the front brake. Well, we got it working. The pads were just loose, hanging out. Uh, filled it up with fluid. Seat's on now. Gas tank's on. Uh, we got a chain for it. We had to buy a complete rear brake. Disc, caliper, lines, master cylinder, everything. Uh, a few things that I've had issues with with this bike while fixing it is one of the coolant lines was leaking, but I got it fixed. Uh, I had one of the oil lines start leaking after I rode it around for a minute, uh, but I got it fixed. The clutch still doesn't work 100%. Every, it's like it's stretching out really fast for some reason, but I'm still looking at it. Uh, two new tires, well, relatively new, and we just put the grips on, and I did them a different way this time. I use uh, spray paint instead of glue or wire just to try it out because I heard it works. So I think the main thing now is just try to clean these plastics. Not exactly sure how I'm going to do that yet, but we got a little bit more work to do on it. I'll bring it back whenever something major happens, I guess, or if I figure out anything new on cleaning plastics. All right, so 426 is 99.9% .9 done. The only thing that I know that I have left is to mount the kill switch, but it did not come with the little clips that do it, so I gotta either buy those or figure out a different way to mount it. Uh, <sighs> Jesus. All the plastics are relatively cleaned up. I don't know if you remember what these looked like, but they were pretty bad. All the stickers are off of it for the most part. Front fork guard's cleaned up, you know, relatively good. Still needs a good washing. But we're gonna go ahead and do a riding video. And then I guess figure out if it needs anything else after. I'm going to attempt to start this first kick. I was able to do it the other day with my buddy here, but. <laughs> Now it's on video, so something tells me I won't be able to. Let's see. Oh, very close, though. Is that it? Okay. Better. There we go. Nope. Not going all the way down. There we go.
good and then we'll uh, take it for a rip around the yard. It's got a lot more power than I'm used to. Handlebars are a little tweaked. Have to look at that. Oh man. It's pretty crazy. Let's see if it'll cut off on me. Yeah. Still probably idled just a hair low. Come up with it a little bit. Yeah, handlebars are a little bent. That should be straight, but I'll see if I can't get those back straight. Might have to bump start this. I don't know if I can kick it. Probably not. <laughs> Let me just bump start it. <laughs> oh, almost got it. Ah, I got it. I'm so sure. I can't. <laughs> I can't kick them. Ugh. Now knowing that the handlebars are bent, I can feel a difference in how it rides. That's pretty crazy. Jesus, you gonna put, you gonna go into neutral for me? Come on, there you go. But anyway, that's this bike basically done. I'm gonna run it out of gas. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, comment, and stay tuned for the next one that comes along.